Hello and welcome to our today's webinar. The topic today will be the Luft iBox. We'll see them here on the sheet. Maybe first I will give you some information about my person. My name is Manuel Preisig and I'm now working for about uh, 15 years here at Luft. I'm responsible for the service and support department and also I'm also doing all the technical uh, trainings. You will also see my email below here, manual.kreisig at luft.de. So after the webinar, if you have some additional questions, you can always send me an email, of course. So about questions during the webinar, you will also be able to uh, enter some questions in your webinar uh, software. On the right side, there is a box called questions, and you will be able to enter some questions inside that box. So, like you can read, for questions, please use the questions function and we will try after the webinar, we have some uh, time to uh, answer all your questions, okay? Okay, let's start. The content of the webinar today, oh, we have three questions we want to discuss with you. So, the first one, which is m normally the most important one, what is the La Luft iBox and what can it do? So, that means the people often ask me, what is the Luft iBox? So we will, uh, or I try to explain that to you today, right? So, and of course, the second thing is the installation, the first steps. So how to install the iBox uh, and how to do that. And the last thing is the, benef the benefit of the Luft iBox. That means what is the extra for if you use the Luft iBox here in this case, okay? So what is the Luft iBox? You see the iBox here on the picture. And normally with the iBox you will be able to acquire values from Luft devices. The status today is that only the Opus 20 uh, will be available as a driver for the Luft iBox. So then you can catch live values from this device, you can push values to customer system with the iBox and you will be able to serve values on demand. Okay, that are the main features here for the Luft iBox. But we will extend them, of course, in the future. What is part of the shipment? So you will see if you order an iBox, you will get the iBox itself, which is the small box, the blue box here. You will get an Ethernet cable, one meter length, and you will get a quick start manual. I will show you that now live, maybe, here. So this is the Luft iBox, and the box of the Luft iBox, of course, yes. So you will see that it looks like that. So okay. this is the English version. We have a German version here on this side and the English version on this side. So and if we open the box, it's like Christmas now for us. <laughs> so you will see what is inside. Again, we have the quick start manual also in two languages. We have on this side, we have the English version like that and on the other side we have the German version. I think we will continue with the English version, right? It's better. So we have six steps. You will see then how to install the iBox. I will explain that also anyway later. So you will see the cable here. That's the one meter Ethernet cables, a standard cable to connect the iBox to the network. And at the end we will have the iBox itself. It looks like that. I will open it. So this is the iBox, you will see the connector, the green connector for the power supply here. You have the Luft labels here with some description about the LED which is here, which will start to blink after you have connected to power and you have the Ethernet port here. So that's all. So we will switch back to the, to the presentation. Okay, functional overview. So what can we do with the iBox itself? So we have two different languages which we can choose from. We have the German language and the English language uh, implemented. Of course, other languages are in preparation. We think about the Chinese version, maybe also Spain version. Um, so this will be, will, will be part in, for the future. What is also a very nice feature is that we have a setup assistant. So that means if you connect, the iBox to the network and you start your browser 
and you normally automatically a setup assistant will start and will guide you through the first steps. So that means automatic start after first login and you will get or you will have the possibility to do an easy adjustment of the iBox itself. The manual itself is stored on the Luft iBox. So if you enter the Luft iBox with a browser, you will be able to download the manual in German or in English. It's like I told you, it's stored on the iBox itself. And you will have the start up, start quick start guide in in a in paper here, enclosed. You saw them. You saw that paper before. So, what are the included apps? I have to tell you that the the structure of the of the iBox itself is based on apps. That means you can install apps. And of course, if you order an iBox, you will have some included apps. If you um, the standard apps which are installed, uh, if you order the iBox, and we have normally this apps here, the Opus 20 app. That means this is the, like a driver to recognize the Opus 20 device. This is of course installed. Then we have the app for the which is called Opus Finder, and this app will guarantee that you will find all Opus 20 which are installed in your network. It's to this is app is used to search for the Opus 20 modules inside your connected network. Then we have an email alarm app where you can enter your uh, email address and you can also activate channels with alarm thresholds. So uh, if the thresholds are, of course, uh, if you enter the thresholds, then you will receive an email. And we have an out app, so that means uh, an app which will convert the um, the data from the Opus 20 in, an, in a special format and that's a JSON format. And also this JSON form, which is I think uh, a network format, is also part of the, um, of the apps. Then of course we have a special firmware running on the hardware and also we have the possibility to do updates of this firmware. The first firmware now, the status now is that you, the installed firmware has the release number 1.0.0. Okay. Completely industry capable. So these are the technical um, descriptions, technical requirements here. We have the dimensions, of course, nothing special. It's a small uh, box here. Then we have the power supply between 24 and 48 volts, which is the industrial standard. Uh, and it can also be uh, used with a power over Ethernet system. So that means um, if your network is able to give the power, PoE, then you will be able to connect this iBox also to these systems and you don't need a power supply. But again, power over Ethernet means that your network where you connect the, the, the module, the iBox, has to be um, on, the system must have the PoE available. That's a must. It's not, it's not coming from the iBox or from the Opus 20. So, do you see the power consumption here? It's 60 milliamps at 24 volts and it's 40 milliamps at 48 volts. The operation, operating temperature is between 0 and 70 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity, you can use the, the iBox is uh, from 0 to up to 90%. The interfaces, you saw that, it's only one uh, connector here, it's an Ethernet port, 10, 100 base T, and you will have the PoE function included. The measuring interval for the iBox will start with 10 seconds, so you will be able to, uh, to configure 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, up to, I think, uh, 10 minutes. So, all in one in the industry, right? So, I have now made here a little small table where we try to explain what the iBox can do. So, it, that means you can call the Luft iBox also a protocol converter. That means that because we changed the Opus 20 protocol, for example, to JSON or, and HTTP. So, that's the reason why you can call the box also protocol converter. You can change the from one protocol to another, depending on the app, of course, which you are, have installed. Then we can also call it measurement device or gateway. 
For measurement device, we open the door to the customer's world. That's, of course, our intention. We want to be able, with the iBox, to get into the customer's systems. Well, that means with the right app, you will be able to connect to the customer's systems here, which is very important. Then you can also call it Industry 4.0 box, which is a new modern word here, Industry 4.0. Uh, and the reason is because we can or we enable Internet protocols with the iBox. That means TCP, IP, Ethernet, JSON, HTTP, all these protocols can be used. You can also call it TCP IP transmitter because we transmit data via TCP IP, Ethernet here. You can also call it data logger and that's a new function here. We will have a new app ready in the next weeks which will be a data logger app and with this data logger app you will be able to log data from different devices, for example from the Opus 20. We will also have a WS app in the future, so also this will be able that you connect the WS sensor to the iBox and you can store the data in the iBox here. And you can also call the Luft iBox intelligent. The reason is because we do not only convert data, we also process them. For example, the alerting is a special processing here. Okay, so let's go on. Installation and first steps. So you saw the quick start menu and this means that with this quick start menu we'll be able to do the uh, installation within six steps. Anyway, I will show you now, or during this webinar I will show you how to do that live. I will try to explain that with a live example here. At the end, if you enter the, the configuration menu of the Luft iBox, you will start at the dashboard and it looks like that. I will show you that also live now in a few minutes. So first, before we start to connect to the Luft iBox, of course, I need to show you how it will be connected. And that's the example setup here for an easy setup. That means normally you need an Ethernet switch where you will be, or where you have to connect the iBox. And on the Ethernet switch, you can also connect different Opus 20 modules, for example. Not only one. It's only one shown here in the diagram, but of course you can also extend it, the, the uh, amount of Opus 20 here. No problem. And then from the Ethernet switch, you will be able to connect to the PC. That's the first setup, the hardware setup itself. After that, if you want to connect, for example, to the Opus 20, you have to do following things here. The first thing is use the Opus Finder app to search for the Opus 20 in the network. And after you have started the Opus Finder app, you will get all the information about the connected Opus 20 in the network and also the IP addresses. Okay, and if you get this information, you have to, of course, notice the IP address. For example, you copy them or you write them down. After that, you go into the Opus 20 app and you enter the IP addresses of the Opus 20 in the app. After that, you can activate the channels which you want to get. You will also get a channel list, of, of course, the complete channel list. And after that, you can choose the measuring interval. And then you have to save the setup. So now you will get, you, like you have uh, done the configuration of the measuring interval, you will always get actual data using the app here. And you will see that also in the table. I will show you that. So then if you want, you can of course also configure the alarms with the sysapp email alarm. Therefore you need to enter an email address in the in the in the app. Yeah. Or more if you use the semicolon here. That's also possible. And you have to enter the alarm thresholds for the values and again you have to save this setup. And after that you can wait and observe what happens on or in the device. Okay, so let's do that live here. So you have your web browser. I have now connected one Opus 20, one iBox on everything to my PC here. Yes, and of course you can start your browser, nothing special, the Ethernet browser here. And then you have to enter the IP address. 
Uh, in the starting, in the startup guide, you will see or you will be informed about the standard IP address. I have a new one because it has to fit to my network here. So I enter my IP address and then you will see this is the, the starting uh, display for the iBox. Loft iBox, you will, on the right side here you will see the installed email address on the iBox. You will see the system name which is called iBox Loft. You will see the firmware version on the iBox um, and you will see also the serial number here. Then here at the bottom you see that you will be able to check the manual if you want. If you click on the link here, the manual will start. You will get a link to the support. That means where you can send an uh, email to the, to the Luft support. To me, of course. <laughs> then you will have the possibility to enter the iBox App Store. Anyway, I will tell you more about that later. And you can enter also our homepage www.luft.com. And here on the left side, this uh, is the display to enter or to log in to the iBox itself. So then we try to enter now or log in, right? So the username, which is the standard username, is admin in small letters. And the same thing for the password, admin. Now you can say login. And you see the setup assistant will start now. That's only for the first time if you install the iBox the first time, then the assistant will start. And you will get information. Welcome, this assistant guides you step by step through the basic configuration of the system. To begin, please select your preferred language and continue to next step. So in this case, I think we will start with English, right? And you go to step two of four here. So click the button, then we have different other things we can enter now. You can enter an email address here in this window. You can change the password if you want. But you can also use the same again, so we need to enter here the old one and the new one, which is the same for me, and again to confirm. So now we go to step 3 or 4. Now we can enter the time. Date here, you can also enter the structure of the date if you want. Then you can enter the date, you can enter the time, also the structure can be changed here. And after that you can say go to step 4 or 4. And here, which is very important here, you can now enter the right IP address which fits to your network. We have two possibilities. You can use DHCP if you have a DHCP network system running uh, at the customer um, surroundings. So you have to, of course, maybe ask the IT guy from the company how you want to use the, uh, the iBox in the network of the customer. So if they have DHCP, you can activate DHCP. That means that the iBox will automatically, automatically receive a free IP address from the network. If not, you can also enter a static IP address, which you will get also from the IT guy, normally, from the customer. So you can enter the IP address here, the subnet mask, the gateway, the DNS server 1 and the DNS server 2. After you know everything, after you have of course done that you can save and complete the assistant okay we will do it now and now we are in the dashboard I showed you before so that's the let's say main menu of the iBox and that's the symbol for the main menu is this small house here on the left side then you get some information, that means you get the email address to contact the customer. You will see the date, the time, the IP address of your iBox with the subnet mask. You will see the serial number here. You see the uptime, so how long the iBox is working now. You see the free memory on the iBox. You will see the system load, that's not so important. You see the firmware version and you see the installed apps, the devices and the active channels of this device. So we have of course five Opus 20 here in this network and four of channels of these five are activated. You see a status here, that means that, that the status of the iBox is okay, of the network, and you see 
a channels checkbox here. That means all channels will give you valid values here. So maybe I need to inform you how the iBox itself works a little bit. So the iBox works with apps. That means you have to install apps for different things. And we have three categories of apps. And you will see them here in the menu. We will have in apps, we will have out apps, and we will have system apps. And the management can be done with this menu here. You can manage the in apps using this button, you can manage the out apps using this button, and you can manage the sys apps using this button. First, before I show you the installed apps and everything, I will show you the settings. So you can enter the settings of the iBox. These are the settings of the iBox using this menu here, settings, and then you will have different small under menus here. First of all, you will have a possibility to do a backup of your loft iBox configuration using this button. With this button, you will be able to do a backup. That means we will create a backup file which you can put on a USB stick or on a CD. And if something happens with the iBox, you will always be able to restore the backup here. Okay? Then we have the name for the iBox. You can change the name, a system name and a long system name. And you can also enter some notice here in this field if you want. You can change the system language here and you can restart the assistant if you, if you want here again. Normally it's not necessary. But if you want, you can also again restart it using this button. You put it on, on and that's it. And then you have to save the setup, of course. For example, like this. Then we have the administrator menu here. Here you can enter the email address, also or some other email address using the semicolons, of course. You can enter some contact information here regarding the, uh, the email address. You can change the password and or, yeah, you can change the password here again, if you want. Then we have the network settings, where you again will be able to change the network configuration of the iBox. Then we have the time menu, where you can change the time um, information, if you want. If you maybe have to change the time or the date. Then you have the possibility to enter your mail server, configuration parameters. Again, here you need to contact the IT guy. He knows all the parameters which you have to enter in this menu. Because without this, if you do not enter the right things here, you will, not, of course, not receive an email from the iBox. Yeah, okay? So that means you need to enter, of course, all the, different, the right parameters here so that the iBox can really send you some email. And then you will be able to save the setup and you can also ch send a test mail if you want so that you know that this really will work, right? Then you can also send reports. Send a di daily report via email on off. Also this can be done so that you will receive an email uh, about the status of the iBox. And you can also enter a log. So there are no results here inside because nothing happened. So if there is a problem with a, valid, with a value or with a device, everything will be written here inside and you can check the log always. No problem. You will get information about level, app name, type, so all the different information will be written here in, inside this table. So these are the settings of the iBox itself. Now we will go into the different apps which are installed here on the iBox. Um, of course, the Sys app, which are installed, I told you before, are two. We have the email alarm app and we have the Opus Finder app. So we will start with the Opus Finder app first because this is normally the first step you have to do if you want to configure an Opus 20 with the iBox. So you start the I Opus Finder app if using the icon. Double click on the icon, that's all. So again, I will show you how to do that. You click on the Sys tab, then you have the Opus Finder app here. You double click on that and you will enter the configuration menu of this app, which is the Opus Finder app. You get the info, so this is, the name is Opus Finder and it's active. Then you can go to the configuration button 
And here you can, of course, enter a name for the app, again, a description. You can deactivate or activate this app. And here is the mo most important button, Search Network for Opus 20 Devices. So we will do that now. I will show you how to do that. Click on it. And now the, the app will start to search. And you see, now we have different Opus 20 which are inside our network. We have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven of them. Cool. I, all, I only use this one because this is the Opus 20 which is directly connected to my uh, Luft iBox with the switch. All the others are uh, also in the Luft building here uh, in the same network. Now if you Again, remember, we need this IP address. That's very important. So you have to notice this IP address and write that down because now we have, after that we have to enter the Opus 20 app to search or to really connect to the Opus. If you want to change something in the settings here for the Opus, you can open here this sign and you will be able to change the IP address settings here. These are the settings of the Opus. So, be careful, okay? So, okay, we have noticed this IP address, then we can, of course, go directly to the in-apps, and here we have the Opus 20 app. Again, now we can double-click on the Opus 20 app, and in the Configuration tab, we will be able to enter the name for the app, we can activate or disactivate the device, the app, and then we have here some general settings. We can say, or we can install or configure the measurement interval, in this case every one minute, the Opus 20 will be asked for values, then network settings, and that's the important thing here. Remember, we have noticed the IP address, you have to enter the IP address here. And then you go to channels, and now you can use the Get Channels button. And if you do that, now the iBox will connect directly to the Opus and read out the complete channel list. And this is the channel list here for the Opus 20. And here, on this table, you will be able to activate the channels which you want to see and register. So, in this case, I have um, used the air temperature. Here it is written in German. We can change that. We can enter your own description if you want, so air temperature, okay. Then I have also activated the dew point, it's in German here, we don't change that also, dew point. That's it. And then we have humidity. And okay. And we have the air pressure here. So, and you save the setup now. And now you can go back to info. And then we have to wait one minute for the actual values. So let's go back to the dashboard. One minute is a long time to wait. <laughs> if you have to wait for it. By the way, you see here you get also information of the connected opus. You will get a serial number, month, year. You see all zeros here. The reason is that I have the prototype of the Opus 20 connected, which is an old version. So there is no serial number entered and no month, year entered. Normally if you connect a standard Opus 20, you will get all the information of the connected sense, uh, device of the Opus 20 here. Software version, device variant, EEPROM version, all these informations are part of this information board here. You will see also the name, you will see that's active and that the measurement interval is 60 seconds, right? So again we try to go back, see if it's now ready or not. Ah, now we are ready, okay. So now you see 
From channel 100, which is air temperature, you will get uh, the temperature, which has a value of 21.49 degrees Celsius, which is a current value, and you will get a time step. And you see the sign here that everything is okay with this value. You get the dew point, the relative humidity, and the air pressure. So that's it. Now you will always get new values every minute. So now it depends on your application, what you want to do with these values. Now we can go to the out app. So that means now what are we doing with the values? And we have two standards apps which are installed. This is the CSV app. So that means we can now transfer the original data from the Opus 20 in a CSV file or in a JSON file format here. Depends on what you want to do. Double click on that. Again, we enter the, the, the CSV uh, um, uh, configuration for the app. You can go to configuration, you can activate it and save that. And if you do not need, do not, if you do not really know how to use it, you have a help button here, APE help, where you will see how to use this app. First, here are the get channels possibilities and get values possibly. For example, here is also example how it will look like. So if you click on that, normally you will see that the Excel with the information will open, right? So that's because we are using the CSV app, right? So I'll close it. All right, that's it. I think that we have done now the configuration of the Opus 20 and of the iBox. In addition, we have a button called Apps here. So I will also enter this button. And here you will see all installed apps on your iBox. At the end, you can install different apps on the iBox and so you will be able to upgrade your iBox depending on your application. If you want to do that, you can directly connect to the Luft iBox App Store here using this button. With this button, you can you will enter the App Store and you can check for new apps. If you have found some new interesting app, you can install that using the install button here. Okay, you will also be able to delete apps using here this button. Delete this app if you don't need it anymore or something like that. So no problem. Okay, so we will go. We do a logout now and we will go on with the presentation. I want to tell or explain some definitions here. What is an app? Because now I used often the word app, 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 app. And normally the people always think if we use the word app that has something to do with Apple, with the Apple uh, app Store or with an Android App Store, in this case it has nothing to do with Apple or Android. Forget it. It's a special iBox app and it will only run on the iBox. And the store is also a special iBox App Store. It has nothing to do with Apple, has nothing to do with Android. You see that here. App, small software for different function on the iBox. It has nothing in common with the Apple or Android apps. We call them Luft iBox box apps. That must be clear. Don't mix them up. Then we also talk about devices. That means using the app. Of course, with an app we can create devices on the iBox. Using the app we will create one or more devices within the app management of course. Devices can be configured for special function or measuring instruments. That's the meaning of device here if you use it with the brand or with the name iBox. Then we have measuring instrument. That's the real physical instrument. For example, Luft Opus 20. That's the measuring instrument. Then we have the Luft iBox App Store. This is the store where you can download actual or all possible apps for the iBox. And you see also the link here. So that means loft-i-box.com and you will enter the Luft iBox App Store. Then we have the firmware. The firmware is the software running on the Luft iBox itself. It has nothing to do with the apps. So that's the, 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 the platform, the main platform of the Luft iBox, like Windows 
uh, uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8 for different desktop PCs. It's the same thing for for the iBox, Luft iBox here, it's the firmware. Then we also have some expression called Luft iBox ecosystem and that means the combination of three parts of the Luft iBox hardware, of the apps, the software and of course of the Luft iBox app store. This is the Luft iBox ecosystem. Okay, then the big picture. So what can be done in the future? So you see the iBox in the middle here and on the left side you will see all the devices which will be uh, possible to be connected to the iBox. So in the future we will have a new app for the WS sensor series and of course also more stuff. I, I have uh, named them here connected hosts. Uh, everything can be imagined and possible. So let's see what we will do in the future depending on the applications of the customers of course. If the customers need some special in-apps for special devices, maybe also some devices not from Luft, which are of course digital, then we can implement them in the Luft iBox. Why not? No problem. And of course also the customers can uh, directly connect to Luft uh, if they have some ideas for new apps. We can discuss that with the developers, that's not a problem. We can do everything normally with the Luft iBox, what you can imagine. So on the right side you will see all the uh, out uh, apps. That means what can be done with the values which come from the left side and what can we do on the right side? Where can we send these values? So, or how can we convert these values? You see then, we can convert it to a special download formats, data download formats. Maybe we can also uh, enter them into the network management system, like IBM, Nagios, Open, HP OpenView, etc. Or we can also maybe um, send them to, uh, to different databases, like an Oracle database, like a MySQL database, or a DB2 from IBM. So also, this is only depending on the app which you have installed on the iBox. Or for de special developers, some special uh, platforms, APIs for the developers like Java, C++. Also this can be possible. Then of course in special application suites like LabVIEW, like Planon. So you do not need some additional stuff here. You only need the app and then you can send them directly to this special software, for example, like LabVIEW. Or you can send the data to cloud services or to mobile devices. All these things can be done in the future, depending on your application, of course. So you need to talk. If you have a special application, you will not find a, a suitable um, app, no problem. Contact us. We will try to discuss that together, if it can be done or not. So now we want, I want to talk a little bit about the Luft iBox App Store again. So the Luft iBox App Store is like the Apple Store but for measurement technology, right? So again, nothing to do with apps, uh, with apps from Apple or Android. So what you can do is searching and loading of new apps on the Luft iBox App Store. So new apps will be added constantly, so always check the App Store. Apps will give you easy and better solutions in the future. Yeah, maybe you have a LabVIEW program and then you will see that we will have a LabVIEW uh, app release. So it is really easy now to integrate the values from the iBox to the LabVIEW in this case. And of course apps will show you what is possible with the Luft iBox. If you want to get app, uh, apps, you have a, a special syntax running or you have to do some special things, you have to activate them. Reason, apps cannot be copied and can only be installed on one Luft iBox. And that's how it works. So that means you have to differ between, there are two different types of apps. You have free apps, so you can of course download them and install them on every iBox. But there are also apps which you have to pay for. And if you have, if you buy one app, then you will be only be able with this one payment to install it on one iBox. Because it will be all you need to activate the app, and uh, it is also linked to the serial number of the iBox. So you cannot only buy one app and install this app on, let's say, ten different iBoxes. This will not be possible. So uh, the last point that's that that point for chargeable apps, you have to buy an activation key. 
and this will look like this. So the first example here is if you want to get a free of cost app from the Luft iBox store and install this on your Luft iBox. So what you have to do is you see the, the, the different steps here. First step, find the app in the App Store. Second step, download the app. Third step, also you need, also for free of cost apps you need to activate them, but you don't have to pay for it. So you have then to activate this app and after you have activated the, the app, that means you will get the serial number and everything must be registered, you will be able to install the app on the Luft iBox. You have seen the button, there is the button in the app menu, in the Luft iBox menu, there you will be able to install then the new app. It's really easy and simple. So that's the first possibility if you want to download a free of cost app. If you want to download or use a chargeable app then it would lo look like that. So that's the example customer downloads a chargeable app from the Luft iBox store and install this on his Luft iBox. So first step again find the app. Second step download the app. But now we have a changed system. Then you have to purchase the app, you have to pay the app can also use credit card or PayPal and after you, after you have paid the app you have to activate the app and then you can install the app. So that's how it will work in the future. Okay. So now let's talk about the benefit of the Luft iBox. Why using a Luft iBox and here are some reasons. The benefit of the Luft iBox, one is because the diff big distance between Opus 20 and Luft iBox, you don't need to use USB, you can use Ethernet cable, which of course is a benefit because you have more distance using Ethernet cables here. Then you will be able to control the iBox from everywhere. You, you only need uh, uh, internet access and then you have will be able to control the uh, iBox via web browser configuration menu here. That's really easy. Then climber monitoring out of the box without additional hardware. So you will be able using only the Luft iBox and for example some different Opus 20 to create a real climber monitoring system. You can activate single channels, control them, you can send alarms via email. I think that's the simple solution to set up such a system here. We have the possibility to, for an easy integration into customer software solutions. Because we are using modern interface and data formats with the iBox as a hardware and with the apps as a software. So that's really, really easy. Easy data transfer into customer programs, the same thing. Because of the different format which we can create using the apps, the out apps, we will be able to transfer the data easily in the customer programs. So the customers will get easy solutions for all their different applications which is a very real benefit here. And we will always be up to date with the iBox because with the app technology you will always be able to search for the newest apps, uh, all the up-to-date apps and you can easily install and download them. Okay, that's the end from my side maybe you have some questions so please enter the questions in the question box on the right side on your uh, webinar software in the meantime I can maybe tell you a little bit about the future in the future I told you that we will ha have a WS app that means we will be able to connect the WS sensors all the different WS sensors to iBox for this reason we need a new hardware. So that means may also in the future maybe we will have two different hardware systems for the iBox. One industrial hardware part which you have seen today and also a hardware which is specially uh, done for um, outside use because if you use it with a WS normally the iBox will be installed in a cabinet outside and then of course you have seen the temperature range between 0 and 70 degree will not fit on the application. So for that reason we now are searching for a new hardware where we can also install the firmware of the, uh, of the iBox on that so we will fit also on outside conditions. 
So we have one question here. Do you know when the solution for WS will be available? Hardware and software. Yes. I think um, they are, as the developers are ready for, for, the, for the app. Let's say for the app, for the software app um, next week. As far as I know. So next week the software app will be released. Or in two weeks. So that's the, that's the time. And also the data logger app will be released in, I think, two weeks or something like that. The hardware is not clear. Maybe in two months. But the software in two weeks, I think. Is there a wireless version of the iBox and the Opus in the pipeline? So a wireless version between Opus and iBox um, will not be in the pipeline. It, is, uh, it can be done that the iBox will be able to connect wireless to the main network. There will be also a hardware per, uh, uh, possibility there. So that means not wireless between Opus and uh, iBox, but wireless between iBox and customer network. That, that can be done. So, uh, next one. Will you create a smartphone app for reading the data? A business app for Apple and Co. Yes, that can be done. Depends on, on, on the application, depends on the customer. Yes, that can be done. I showed you also the, maybe we can go back. So here, you see that Mobile devices. Mobile devices means also that, um, for example, a special Apple app can be done or an Android app. So that is, of course, possible. Why not? So next question is, when is the wireless iBox to customer network available? I think that's only a hardware thing. The hardware is ready. As far as I know, there is a hardware box which uh, has a uh, a wireless uh, antenna integrated so I think that is not a problem so you we have to I have to ask the developers but normally it should be uh, let's say available now is it possible to read in cloud until now it's not possible because we have no app for that but depending on the cloud system which you want to put uh, the data we can create this app again it's a, a thing of the solution and a thing of a discussion. We need to know your uh, applications. If you send us the information about the application, what you want to do, we can release an app for that. For example, if you want to put in a special cloud system, we need to know this information. You can send that to my email address and I will, of course, transfer the email to the developers and then they will create this app if it's necessary or not. Why not? How does the seven digit app works? Yeah, the seven digit uh, app is an out app. That means um, that it will only, it's only to show the people something on the screen. So the seven digit app works like that, that you choose one channel from the Opus 20, for example, and then you uh, um, will transfer this data on the seven digit app and this will be shown on the desktop screen. That's it. That's only to show a value. It's, it's, it's not a real application here. The, the, the apps which are available now are mainly only to show you how, what, what is possible with the, with the iBox. So in the future we will, we will really have some application apps. And of course then they will not be free of cost. This 7 digit app for example is free of cost. It's only that you can play around a little bit with the iBox. Okay? So that you will be able to create an output, a 7 digit output for a value for example. Okay, so thank you very much for your interest. Stay tuned for other webinars. So please check our homepage in the future for new, more webinars. And of course, thank you very much and bye-bye.